Hey guys, this is Shankhu here and welcome to Smart Bengali. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Recently, my old computer got damaged due to a sudden power surge. Since it was a pretty old setup, so I decided to build a new one. But this time I wasn't ready to pay a lot of money on this build because I won't be using this setup as my primary workstation. So I decided to make a budget gaming build which can be also used for light content creation. I picked up AMD's new Ryzen 5 3600 processor and B450 motherboard from MSI. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing the Ryzen 5 3600 CPU from AMD and I'll also show you the installation process of Ryzen CPUs on a AM4 motherboard. So without wasting any time, let's do the unboxing first. So here we have the box, slightly smaller than typical AMD CPU boxes. AMD branding on the left corner and we have the big Ryzen branding in the middle. This third generation Ryzen CPU was launched on 7th July 2019 and the main highlighted feature of the CPU is the Gen 4 PCI Express support. This is the mid-level Ryzen CPU, 5 written here and this can be compared with the Intel's i7 lineup. So what do we have on this side? A glimpse of the Rath Stealth cooler. The cooler is included inside the box which is good. On the top we have the seal. The serial number is written on the seal. Please note down this number in case of future support. On this side we have a transparent window to get a view of the CPU itself. On the back we have some information about the CPU. This chip is built on AMD's new Gen 2 architecture which requires AM4 socket on your motherboard. Codename of this lineup is Matisse which is the successor of the Pinnacle Bridge CPUs. This processor comes with a stock cooler and 3 years warranty. Ryzen 5 3600 is a 7nm chip with a max TDP of 65W. Just in case if you don't know about this, 7nm is the size of the transistors on the CPU. Since smaller transistors are more power efficient, they can do more calculations without getting hot, which is usually the limiting factor for a CPU performance. A special type of transistors called fin field effect transistors are being used on this chip. I'll talk about this later on a different video. This is a 6 core 12 thread CPU on a base clock of 3.6 GHz which can be boosted up to 4.2 GHz. And this chip comes with a massive 32 MB L3 cache. From the specification we expect to get high performance from the CPU. Let's open the box. I'm gonna cut the seal of the box with my ugly knife. Okay it's done. Let me open it. Traditional AMD packaging. We have our processor here. Let me put it aside for the moment. We have some leaflets here. New Ryzen 3000 CPUs are compatible with all 500 series motherboards out of the box. If you are using a older gen motherboard like B450, you need to update your wires first otherwise your motherboard won't detect your CPU. If you see this AMD Ryzen 3000 desktop ready label on your motherboard box, you don't need to update the BIOS. Alternatively, you can check your motherboard manufacturer's website to verify if your motherboard supports third generation Ryzen CPUs. The same information is written in various languages here. Now we have the CPU installation guide here. Read these informations if needed. Basically some safety precaution regarding electrostatic discharges is mentioned here. After all microprocessors are very sensitive things right? Please do not power on your CPU until you install the heatsink properly. Otherwise your CPU might get damaged. We have some easy to understand diagrams here. Don't worry I will show you how to install the CPU on your motherboard. So let me get rid of this manual. Let's check the CPU cooler which came bundled with the CPU. We have the cooler inside this box. Let me open it. This is a Rath Stealth cooler which is not a good cooler for the CPU. In my personal opinion of course. Here's the cooler. The size is very small. Rath Fire cooler is bigger than this. AMD shipped this Rath Stealth cooler with some pre-applied thermal pad. And the surprising thing is, underneath this thermal paste, there is no copper plate. It's all aluminium body only. Seems that AMD did some cost cutting here. Another thing I should mention, this CPU fan is made by Foxconn. Normally Cooler Master makes the CPU heatsink fans for AMD, but this time they went for a different maker. 
I have another Ryzen 5 3600 sitting on my desk which comes with the Rats wire cooler and the same story in that cooler too. You can verify this by opening up your own unit. This fan is powered by a traditional 4-pin CPU fan header. Most of the cases, the pre-applied thermal pests are not good enough. So you can use a decent aftermarket thermal grease like this one, the Cooler Master Master Gel Pro. Or if you are ready to invest some more amount of money, then you can get a premium and reputed thermal pests like this Noctua NTH1. Enough about CPU cooler and the thermal pest. Now it's time to check the processor itself. Here we have the CPU. Ryzen 5 3600 written on it, made in China and diffused in USA. CPUs are made from chips that are cut from a wafer of silicon. The electronic circuits on the wafer are created by a process called diffusion. We have a Ryzen sticker included with the CPU. This is Ryzen 5 3600 CPU chip. It has 1331 pins on it. You can learn more about the Gen 2 microarchitecture, Infinity Fabric, Scalable Data Fabrics and other stuffs on AMD's website. I'll put some link in the video description. So there's nothing left for unboxing. Let me show you the installation process. I'm gonna pair up this CPU with the B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard and 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB memory stick. Let me show you how to install the processor on AM4 socket. Before touching the motherboard, make sure you ground yourself up to some metal. Otherwise, you might damage your motherboard's sensitive components because of electrostatic discharge. You can use an anti-static wrist strap. Now search for a small triangle encryption located at one corner of the socket. Here it is. I don't know if this is visible to you. I'm sorry for my poor camera quality. Open the processor from the protective case. Don't touch the pins. I repeat, do not touch the pins. Hold it by its sides, otherwise you will damage the pins. And if any of these pins get bent, it will be a nightmare for you. Now you will find a small golden triangle at one corner of the CPU, bottom corner. This one. The same marking will be on the top side too. Very tiny one. Now open the latch of the socket, give it a little push, it will open up easily. Now align the golden triangle of the CPU with the triangle of the socket. Now put this in and let the pins fall into the socket. Do not put any pressure. To make sure it has been installed properly, you may give it a little wiggle, but don't overdo it. Now I am confirmed my CPU is installed correctly in the socket. Let me lock down the latch. We are done here. Now you might wanna clean up the surface of the CPU with 99% isopropyl alcohol. Since I will use a brand new CPU, I am not cleaning the surface. But if you are reinstalling your cooler, make sure you wipe out the previous thermal paste and clean the surface. So I am gonna install the heatsink now. First we need to remove these rentations from the board cause these are used to install a clip type heatsink and I am gonna install stock wrap stealth cooler which is a screw type heatsink. I am using this Phillips screwdriver to remove these rentations. You should do it carefully cause if you let the screwdriver slip and touch the PCB accidentally you could end up damaging your motherboard. First one is done, one more to go. So I've removed the heatsink brackets. Now you can see four screw mounts and the stand up on the board. We don't need to remove the back plate. So let me get the stock rat stealth cooler. It has some thermal paste pre-applied on it so that we don't need to apply any third party paste. Now in this B450 boards, you will not be able to align the cooler in any possible way such that the AMD logo sits vertically top on the board. So I would recommend you to align the AMD logo with the VRM heatsink. Otherwise this extended piece of the cooler could cover one of your RAM slots. But in this particular case, I am installing it in the opposite way cause I am planning to put a custom sticker on my VRM heatsink. So if I put the cooler in that way, it will cover up my sticker. Align the screws with the mounts and place this heatsink down gently on top of the standoffs. Make sure you place it correctly. Always do this cooler installation outside of the case otherwise it might get a little difficult to manage. When you are sure that you have perfectly aligned the cooler with the mounts, now it's time to tighten the screws. 
So get your screwdriver on any of the screws. First turn it backwards slightly, pushing it down. You'll hear the clunk from the thread catching. After you hear the sound, go forward slightly. Do not tighten it entirely. Just attach the screw to the mount for now. Now go to the other corner and then do the same task. You should use a diagonal pattern. Otherwise you might put uneven pressure on the heatsink and it will create some gap between your heatsink and the cooler. Trust me you don't wanna do that. So when you're done attaching all the screws into the mount, go for a second round. And this time do it with pressure and tighten it entirely. Make sure your heatsink has a good contact with the CPU. Now it's time to plug the CPU fan header. Locate the 4 pin CPU fan header on your motherboard and plug it in. This is very important guys. I've seen people forget to plug the CPU fan and ends up with a burnt CPU. So do not forget it. Let me install my RAM stick on the DIMM slot of the motherboard. When you're using a single stick for the first time, consult your motherboard manual to check which slot should be used. Check for the tiny notch on the memory stick and align it to the motherboard RAM slot. Push it down with gentle pressure until you hear the sound from the clamp. The clamp should get attached automatically. Now I'm gonna install my GPU. So I've connected the power supply. Let me try to boot the system for the first time. I'm gonna short the power pins to start the PC. As you can see we have successfully booted into the BIOS. So guys this was the unboxing and the installation guide for Ryzen 5 3600 CPU and the same process applies to the other Ryzen CPUs too. I made an unboxing video of MSI B450 Tomahawk Max board on my channel. If you are interested you can check that video. Let me use this setup for 2-3 weeks then I'll make a detailed review video of the CPU. You know there are a lot of things to talk about this processor. Some people are saying there are some cooling issues on the CPU, low voltages at the idle state and various other minor issues which I'm sure will be fixed via BIOS updates. I don't wanna post a rush review. So hit the subscribe button guys, like the video and stay tuned for my next video. Thank you.